Hello and welcome to the big picture. The state of the Indian economy is causing serious concern as the rupee slides down to unprecedented levels, 63 rupees just now. Food inflation has hit record levels. Current account deficit has also hit a new low, among other problems. When the economic survey was released earlier this year, it was predicted that the downturn was more or less over and there were optimistic predictions of the economy recovering. However, all that has proved to be just that, wishes and hopes. Now there are worries of the economy sinking further and predictions of the growth rate going further down. However, the Prime Minister and Finance Minister say that everything is being done to arrest the downturn. Amid the gloom which seems to be all pervasive, today we will look at the causes for it and also see if there are any signs of the turnaround in the near future and what needs to be done to overcome the crisis. To discuss this, I have with me Renu Kohli, an economist and former staff member, RBI and International Monetary Fund, Mohan Guruswamy, visiting fellow at the Observer Research Foundation, and Professor Ravi Srivastava of the Center for the Study of Regional Development at the JNU. Welcome to all of you. Mohan, I would like to come to you first. There are fears being expressed in some quarters, though of course the Prime Minister has denied any such problems, that you know we are heading towards something like what we witnessed in 1991. Do you think such such fears are well founded, and if not, why? I don't think we're heading for <coughs> for 1991. 1991 was a unique situation. We didn't have any foreign currency left at that time. We've still got eight months cover of foreign reserves, eight months of of imports we can still pay for. So that is not an urgent problem. But there there is a serious economic crisis. There is a general economic slowdown. GDP growth has come down to 5.5%. Because GDP growth has come down, revenues are down. Revenues low means it hits the government finances. Current account deficit is out of control. Fiscal deficit is out of control. The trade balance is increasing. Investment is down. Government capital investment is also down. Subsidies have increased from 9% of the budget five years ago to 16% of the budget now. And there are all other kinds of things which are urgent problems which are not being attended to. For instance, the petrol subsidy, the LPG subsidy. Under, under recoveries of oil companies are now 1,30,000 crores. So what is the government doing? Government, it added as if these problems are not enough. The government will soon face a financial crisis. That's when the financial system gets hit. NPAs are piling up in banks. <coughs> There are all kinds of other problems looming. There's no fresh investment coming to the banks. People are not taking credit from the bank. So there are all kinds of other problems coming. And you know, the government has to wake up. But the government alone cannot do anything. What they need is a national consensus. If we agree to put up LPG prices, then the opposition parties must play ball with them. If we have to cut subsidies to loss-making public sector undertakings, the opposition parties have to play with it. Because in election year, to expect the government alone to take politically suicidal decisions is too much to expect. And then we tend to postpone the uh, solutions and the solutions and, and the problems keep piling up. Now, there is no discourse at all in, in parliament. There is no discourse among the leaders of the parties. You know, Congress party doesn't talk to the BJP. BJP don't talk to the Congress. The only discourse is abuse. All right. you hear is abuse. Right. No, I, th I think you've made a very important point there, Dr. Ravi Srivastava. This is an important thing, what he's saying, that there is this gloom, you know, which is there all-pervading, it is staring at our faces, but the political class doesn't seem to be, you know, seriously discussing these issues at all. No, I agree. The political class has to discuss these issues and there has to be some degree of consensus, not only within the political class, but there has to be also consensus between the political class and, and other stakeholders. And they, those stakeholders, in my view, are not only the property classes, the corporate businessmen and so on, they're also uh, small-scale manufacturers. Uh, they are the working people of this country. So I, basically, one is talking not only of the evolving a consensus, which is a narrow consensus, it has to be a broad consensus because many of these moves obviously hurt different sections of people very differently. Right. But what is true is that we are now facing a, a classical downturn hmm. uh, where there is a domino effect and there is in some sense a perverse reaction to some of the 
short term policies which the government takes i mean the classic case in the last few days has been uh, that of the liquidity tightening in the rbi worsening the financial portfolio of banks and then the rbi is uh, controls limited controls on capital outflows you know restricting the automatic approval route which has led to fii's uh, capital outflow right. and th- this has of course affected both the stock markets but also the rupee value right so there is a there is an issue here but i think the long term the genesis of this crisis needs to be understood uh, and the, the, the genesis of the crisis did not start in only 2008 9 it started earlier it started in the boom phase of the indian economy right where uh, in some sense uh, the 2004 invest- onwards around yes 2004. because because the, pri- the the private sector also invested hugely exactly. in capacity uh took debts foreign debts that too. foreign debts that too and in, in this period in the, there is this is a hangover also of those expectations right. which of course uh, have not been fulfilled you know so i think it's a it's a one has to understand what exactly it's a complex of factors and uh, the, we are paying the price for those complex factors macroeconomic policy uh, slow actions by government crony capitalism of an extremely high order you know and that cutting across you know uh, allocation of coal blocks uh, the 2g spectrum and what have you so essentially it's a whole set of factors which has led to the crisis uh, the mismanagement of the crisis and different stakeholders are responsible for the current state of affairs we will we will we will come to the stakeholders and it also the politics of it reno kohli one of the things which is being said about this crisis is about the way the rbi has managed this thing and you know they are constantly at least from what we use what we have been reading from the newspapers and it is there there seems to be some kind of a conflict between what the way rbi looks at the crisis and the way the government looks at the crisis do you do you agree with it and do you think with now with a, a new rbi governor going to uh, take over is there any hopes of the, this 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 clash if 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 there is a clash between the government and the rbi the way they look at it that would be sorted out see the new governor is uh, very much part of the crisis response which was instituted about uh, uh, in middle of july uh, to stabilize the rupee which was to tighten liquidity extraordinarily and to raise the short term overnight interest rates right. he was the chief economic uh, advisor right. then and he was very much uh, it was very much a consultative uh, process to respond to the the rupee fears by uh, an interest rate defense there has been conflict it appears from newspaper reports between the central bank and the government over the past one year which is right. to do with interest rate reductions right the government on its part has felt that the uh, economy could do with uh, a, a respite on high interest costs to help stressed uh, firms who, uh, whose interest costs have m- uh, mounted to help uh, banks uh, or assist the banks in uh, their uh, strengthening their balance sheets which are repair, which are damaged by um, uh, non performing assets and so on looking forward uh, what can the new governor dr raguram rajan do which can be besides you know what is already being done frankly i think very little given the fact that uh, this shock is precipitated by external events which is the withdrawal of the intention of uh, withdrawal of monetary stimulus by the us uh, yes. central bank right there is very little uh, any new governor can do even though the problems have been largely home grown I agree with my previous com- commentators about uh, broad downturns etc and the lack of political consensus however looking ahead i think there is a some bit of glimmer of hope at least in terms of just stimulus which is uh, which might help repair the economy one is the uh, i see the prospects of a good uh, i see that the monsoon has played out um, as was largely expected a couple of months ago so going ahead over the next two months i do think that there should be a stimulus delivered to the economy on the growth front from that angle a second thing is that uh, the both the us and the euro zone have surprised by the rebound they just the recovery in both the zones has been has far surpassed um, forecast um, by all the economists so that will deliver a stimulus in terms of regaining in exports in particular a depreciating uh, rupee Uh, along with us and eurozone recovery really really helps is very good uh, for the india's uh, for india's it and software exports right. so there are these two angles from where i should expect a stimulus and looking ahead i think that's very 
favorable. Okay, you, 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 you actually, you're actually a little optimistic in this, in, in this atmosphere of gloom, uh, which is not... I am, <laughs> yes. Okay, Mohan, you, yes. you wanted to react to what Professor Ravi Srivastav said? No, I think, you know, uh, I think the, the issue of 2G and all doesn't really affect the economy. You know. I think bringing that is very extreme. I think there are huge macroeconomic issues which need to be addressed. If you can't get investment up, if you can't get, you know, savings up, if you can't cut down the balance of payments, you know, deficit, you've got to attend to all those things. They are much more important. Mohan. And on that, you will never get a consensus on, on corruption in this country. But on the economic problems, you have to forge a consensus. Because you can't keep postponing this forever. We've had a continuous series of, of balance of payments deficits, right. current account deficits, for about 10 years now. No, no, I, I, Mohan, 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 that's the question I wanted to ask. The current account deficit position is becoming more and though the finance minister says that he will keep it under control, he won't allow it to go beyond $70 billion and all that. One, well, one he's, he has instituted some measures for no, I, well, I, no, Mohan, I, my question is this. You know, the, in the last 10 years, I was reading somewhere that in the last 10 years, you know, if you take the average, exports have grown in uh, exports have grown by about 20 percent compared to the world average of about 11 and 12 percent. Okay. But why is it that the current account deficit has continued to grow? As because we are also spending too much money. We imported 71 billion dollars worth of gold last year. In in the month of July, uh, we had imported gold of 39 billion dollars already. So you know, you can't continue like this. This is and there's also a flight of capital. Last year, we were net exporters of capital to, uh, to, to, the, to the markets abroad. You can't have, you know, Indian companies not investing in India and running out. And you've got a lot of Indian capital abroad which is not coming back. So and I think, you know, you've got to attend to all these things. Absolutely. Professor Shivastu, there, there's this report that, you know, there about $172 billion debt is there and which has to be cleared by 31st of March 2014, out of which the corporate debt is about 40% of that. Absolutely, and, and, and a lot of it is accounted by a small number of companies. Right. And one can see... And the this is related to what you were saying earlier that the corporates during the boom period had gone and reinvested and borrowed a lot. Yeah, and you can see the investment strategies which these particular corporates have followed. So I think one has to see the one has to see the fact that the current crisis has been precipitated by a whole set of actors. Right. You know, we it's not just the government. Yeah, I mean exactly. It's not just the government. There are a whole set of factors which have accounted for the the kind of situation that we are seeing today, and uh, their exposure and the exposure of you know some of these big corporates. So foreign debt is actually quite large. Right. And on the on the on, at the same time as Mr. Goswami has pointed out. There is a flight of capital. Yes. So there is a situation, but this is not a situation which is unheard of in international. You know, one has seen this in Mexico, one has seen this so many other places in Thailand. Thailand. Yes, exactly. So, you know, this is a classic situation where one sees uh, factors of this kind. But I'll come to the silver lining part. You know, we talk about a downslide in the rupee, but it's absolutely right that the downslide of the rupee also provides an opportunity. Yes. And it's not only in the service sector. It should actually also, if you look at the manufacturing sector, right. if it, for example, if you look at garments, right. uh, at the moment, our competitiveness in that sector, vis-a-vis -vis both China and Bangladesh, Bangladesh, who are major competitors, should have in principle improved a lot. But then the figures don't say this. So I think the... Why one do you the think issues, the figures don't say this? The, see, that, that's exactly Is there a the policy issue. problem think, there? I think it, that that's, we have to look at what exactly, why is it that our exports in some of these sectors are not responding to the fact that there has been a depreciation of about 12% right. in, in the rupee. But these are issues of where I think a great deal more focus and attention is needed. Uh, the focus presently has been on FDI inflows, yes. uh, majorly on infl inflows and improving inv investor confidence. A large number of you know projects have been cleared. But I don't know at what level because you know project clearances are, are uh, no, today required. We have, at so today many we have levels. read. Yeah, yeah, today we have read. Mohan, today we have read that you know the the one lakh crore worth investments, about eighteen or twenty major investments have been cleared, and you know that should is is that something which should also help in you know turning around or at well, least I, the confidence to be boosted of I, the, the investor you know, confidence. I think there is there is a problem of confidence in the government now. There's a confidence that this government has run out of ideas. 
and I think the government really needs to restore that confidence first. You have got to come up with some comprehensive omnibus plan to jerk us out of this stupor. And you know, it's, it's, it's a shame that we have a Prime Minister who is a professional economist, a former professor. He should be teaching these people economics. And he doesn't use that office as a pulpit. Right. And he, so you know, that is the failure of, 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 of leadership at this time of crisis. Whenever there is a crisis, you have a leader who takes the problem by its horns and deals with it. Look at the way Barack Obama dealt with the problem in the United States. Look at the way Cameron dealt with his crisis. Look at the way Roosevelt dealt with his crisis in history. But you know, you need to have that, that will and determination and okay. the vision to see it through. Okay, okay, Mohan. Uh, we need to go into a very short break now. Please keep watching and come back and continue the discussion. There are several other issues that need to be discussed about the economy which we are facing today. Welcome back. We are discussing the state of the economy and asking the question is how do how does the economy turn around? What are the measures need to be taken? Redo Kohli coming to you. You know, one of the one of the major things which has been talked about is about is about the way things have happened in the last last few years. And you know, there is there is there are two two ways of looking at it, two arguments happening. One is that you know, inflation should be controlled, or other other is saying that, that the growth should, growth is more important. But neither the inflation has been controlled nor the growth has happened. Why do you think this has happened? It, it, this, this has happened. Inflation has come down over the since uh, the past one year. In particularly, if you look, uh, but the food you look inflation at, uh, would WPI, be very high. Wholesale price inflation. Yes. Food inflation remains high, and that's a number. That's due to a number of factors, but primarily. It is coming from food uh, cereal inflation, and that in itself reflects government's procurement policy. I mean, if we, if you see the plot, if you plot the two together, you will find that the ex extraordinary procurement of stocks in anticipation of uh, bringing in the food security bill from December 2011 goes up, and that is directly correlated very positively with food price uh, cereal price inflation, which is eventually reflects itself in overall food inflation. Looking ahead, I think now with the passage of the uh, food security bull, bill, allowance of some bit of wheat exports and the you know, offloading of stocks, I do think it will come down along with the favorable monsoons. So both things that aside. Uh, on the other hand, if you take away the strip the food inflation, then actually uh, core WPI is extremely low, it's extremely weak and that directly reflect, reflects the weak uh, growth. Um, growth on growth, I have slightly uh, different view. I agree with my previous, uh, with the other two commentators about uh, um, lack of political consensus on certain issues, which is, de which is definitely impeding uh, uh, or obstructing uh, movement ahead. At the same time, I do think that uh, issues like 2G corruption-related scams issues the, and the consequent litigation has had the effect upon uh, uh, growth in a very damaging way. Uh, not only has it spooked uh, business confidence of investors, let's not forget that after the crisis, the domestic investment recovery was extremely strong. Right. And that is reflected right up till the 2010-11 uh, GDP numbers. We see right. a very strong rebound in investment. Thereafter, it has collapsed. And secondly, it's also reflecting in the macroeconomic numbers like the current account deficit. Other than gold and oil, for which demand is inelastic and from, on which India's dependency is very high, where is the spoilage in the current account deficit coming from? It's mainly coming from iron ores. Imports are frankly substituting for domestic production, which has come to a stand, standstill because right. there has been a ban uh, upon illegal mining right. until certain issues are resolved. Okay. Looking back to uh, moving to the parliamentary lack of uh, consensus, I would just like to very quickly flag the consensus which is elusive upon land acquisition. That's a key, a key issue which, is, right. uh, which underlies the stalling of uh, infrastructure projects. 
and the non passage of the goods and services tax which would go to augment the long term recovery prospects and long term investment prospects of the uh, indian economy so these are two effects which are have which have had an impact upon uh, economic growth and that's why we see the continuous slide in growth to up and, uh, at around 5% levels for the last five or four uh, six successive quarters right professor shivasta you think that what uh, renu is renu is talking about one thing second thing is you know this uh, there have been people have been i mean some some of the experts have been telling the government that when you find that certain policy they will not work you have to reverse the policies you think those reversals have happened or you think it it, it has been inadequate or do you think it is necessary to well i don't uh, first of all <clears throat> in terms of what uh, you know the growth versus inflation thing right. that you began your earlier question with uh, the fact is that if if indeed the kind of inflation that we are seeing whether the food inflation in particular that we are seeing if it is cost push inflation uh, and if it is not because of excess demand in the system then i think the policies that the that the rbi has been following have been excessive because they cannot actually address you know uh, supply side issues they cannot address cost inflation issues and there um, i think in some sense uh, the government sections in the government are arguing that the rbi should be should have moderated its stance is probably a correct stance and, and i hope this happens as quickly as it does because uh, um, uh, this has adverse implications for the economy now why is a uh, food inflation been so high food grains uh, yes stocks have been very high and the government should have downsized its stocks but do you agree on. do you agree that that, that, that it has been it's being stocked up to to meet the national food security security not at all it's been there now for several years the, there has been a build up stock for several years that build up of stock it is true has been because partly because of the procurement policies of government Uh, but the, but it is not only in cereals that in, I mean it's wheat and rice are not the only two uh, the factors which are driving the food inflation. You have vegetable oil, you have right. you know milk, you have uh, all kinds of things, vegetables yeah. and so on. So I think it's a fairly broad based uh, inflation as far as consumers are concerned. And the world over retail prices is is the benchmark of inflation, not wholesale prices. Right. So we are facing that kind of situation. but uh, in in this situation whether there should be a reversal of policy what kind or whether as some people are arguing you know you need a wholesale package new package of reforms right i i frankly think that this uh, at this juncture you know one year before elections right. knowing how policies are negotiated in this country uh it's a it's completely a moonshine uh, thing to talk about a package of reform package of reform that or, this stage and i in the government has made its own intentions whether it, you agree with it or not quite clear it has taken a number of steps at this juncture but i think these steps will and they are firstly they are insufficient as i said one needs to look not only at just what will happen tomorrow very very short term but one needs to take definite steps to boost exports and in an environment where the rupee is depreciating i think more steps need to be taken but according uh, to according sector to sector by sector you know sector according by to venu kohli and many other commentators this in fact the slide in the rupee is actually an opportunity as yes, far absolutely. as absolutely i i i completely agree with that yes uh, mohan mohan you know it's very interesting uh, the other day the prime minister was talking in one of the that rbi function he says that the possibilities and limits of monetary policy in a globalized economy needs to be relooked at what do you what, you know what does he mean by that well <laughs> it needs to be relooked because you know there are things happening which are outside your control and then you know but the important i think issue here really with our government is the way our government is structured now the office of the prime minister the prime minister's office actually micromanages this country there's a lot of Prime Minister himself deals with about 400 files a day. It is not humanly possible for an individual to make apply his mind and make correct policy decisions on this. I think government has to get a little decentralized, get a little organized. <coughs> When things get then pile up, they get postponed. So you know there is an economic consequence to that. All this is adding up now. And when decisions have to be taken, they don't get taken. For instance, we all saw the. under recoveries of the oil companies we saw it piling on for years for the last two years there has been a debate saying that you got to deal with this it was not dealt with then we go and announce schemes like you know you can export 
$200,000 a year to buy houses abroad. Right. Last year, $3.5 billion went out. Gold imports were soaring. You didn't step in. Then you step in and there's a knee jerk reaction. You suddenly put 10% import duty on it. There are ways we could have had gold bonds issued, you could have done all kinds of things. But you know, you need time. The policy maker needs time to think of these things. Mohan, to get Mohan, new ideas. Mohan, Mohan I, have, I have a question very quickly. What uh, Professor Ravi Shivasta also was mentioning earlier. It's about the role of the corporates in all this mess which we find ourselves in. Do they do they do they take responsibility for it? And no, they will. will will they will they help the government in trying to overcome some of the problems which they, which is being faced? They will not help because corporates are only for themselves. And you know, <coughs> they will blame the government for it. Right. You know, corporates think you know they only account for industry accounts over eighteen percent of GDP. But they think that they keep this economy going. Look at the disproportionate influence the chambers of commerce, the CII, have on this government. Absolutely. So that was it. That's what Professor Srivastava also was talking about, the crony capitalism, which has also affected. Uh, Reno, Reno, last words to you very quickly. You think uh, you, you already, you know, were, were uh, a little optimistic about something, some, some silver lining in all these things. Do you think, how, how long do you think that will take for, for the economy to, you know, for us to feel that turnaround is happening? As far as the stimulus from uh, a good monsoon is concerned, I would expect to see some effects <coughs> in the next quarter, that is the October to December. Definitely we should see a rebound in rural demand and that itself would help consumption, which whose contribution to GDP growth hopefully should improve. I also think that uh, given the uh, consecutive increase in, increases that we have seen over the past four months in the, EMI, in the PMI on export front, uh, I think that should also support, that should also support the, uh, other than growth, it should also uh, support the current account deficit. However, external uncertainty is likely to remain high because uh, first, first of all, there is as yet little clarity as to when the reversal of the U.S. monetary stim uh, stimulus will start taking in and if then, by how much. There is also going to be a new Federal Reserve Chairman, so right. there is a lot of external uncer uncertainty. Right, right. But there are two impulses that I see and uh, those would be a silver lining, I would say. Okay. More very quickly. Very quickly, you know, I, on the long run, I feel positive and bullish about India still. But, you know, the thing is that India has been running on autopilot. Yes. Growth, slow down has very little to do with what the government does or doesn't do. The growth has been taking place because of a demographic push, certain conditions in the global market. And for governments to take credit for that, and for governments to take the complete blame for that, I think, you know, is not fully justified. But okay. I think, you know, the political system has to evolve. You've okay. got to grow up now. Okay. No, I very think, quickly. I, you, no, I, I, this I, rupee slide, do yes. you think that... The, it will, it will, it will, it will get arrested at some point of time, or do will we see the? No, I, I think, the, I think the current bad account bad. deficit is beginning to improve somewhat, and I agree with the previous speaker that in, uh, the agricultural, the, you know, the, the, the monsoons monsoon. will provide a okay. small impetus and an improvement in this inflation situation. But in the medium term, we are we are not looking at a sizable upswing of upswing. the Indian economy. Okay. On that note, I think we need to end. There are some hopes and some. Uh, you know, reasons for optimism, but still, it's it's it will take some time for the economy to you know see some kind of a turnaround. But we'll keep watching what will happen. Thanks to all my guests, Reno Kohli, Mohan Goswami, and Professor Ravi Srivastava. Please keep watching. We we'll come back with another big picture same time tomorrow.